We live in a world that technology has made things easy, right? But I think a lot of Christians struggle with, <laughs> with allowing technology into that aspect of our marriage because we are afraid that we are sinning. Imagine him doing those things to you or when he had done those things to you in the past and then talk about it with each other. So if you're in a long distance marriage and you're constantly watching erotic movies, reading erotic novels, reading erotic articles, or you're watching, you know, pornography, or you're doing all those things and then you're saying that your body is calling. Before call, it won't call. It will call now because you are awakening the love. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Victoria Ayodele Fash. In case you're seeing this face for the first time, if you're first time out on this channel thank you so much for stopping by thank you so much for you know watching my content please make sure that you subscribe if you have not we are still going to 50k okay so please make sure that you subscribe make sure that you like this video so that youtube can keep on recommending these videos to new people thank you so much once again for being here and to all my ogs thank you guys i appreciate you guys you guys are so dear to my heart god bless you so much okay so today i've come with another interesting topic that i want us to talk about and also i would like to hear your views in the comment section below but before we get into that i want to introduce you guys to something very exciting yes okay valentine is coming hey where is your boyfriend hey you want to see that no i'm sorry <laughs> i don't mean to pressure you before i know there's been a lot of pressure especially this weekend on instagram if you're nigerian you know what i'm talking about but for those that have a boo a bae and a husband or a wife i've come with really interesting deals for you i know that you know it can get very tricky trying to get you know uh trying to get um gifts for your spouse in this season and if you're part of those people that still get boxers and singlets for your boyfriend or for your uh, fiance or whatever you guys call it these days or your husband please this is a no okay if you're one of those people that only get flowers and perfume for your wife or for your um, partner your female partner in this season please we need to upgrade okay and i've come with a very interesting deal for you guys yes i'm introducing you guys to olivia's collections olivia collections with a z at the end i'm going to leave the link below in the description box i'll also leave it named here yes they'll they'll be running some sales interesting sales and i'm telling you i've been buying from them from her rather <laughs> i've been buying from her you know you guys know that my husband is a soccer for shoes okay so i always get him shoes on his breath day on valentine's or whatever even wedding anniversary i get him shoes and i have olivia collections is tested and trusted their shoes last a, a lifetime you know really amazing designs you can go to the Insta instagram page to check you know the page out okay however they will be running some valentine's package this valentine season okay so uh, she has different packages i'll just be going through a few of them so for the twenty thousand package for the guys you get a bag of um slides spare um, pair so slides you guys know what slides are um a lavish leather belt and also perfume um for the ladies the uh the list is the 22k package it comes with slides it comes with um hand dryer or straightener and perfume and chocolate okay and then for the guys the 25,000 package comes with uh, a sh bag of bespoke shoes yes and her shoes are great I'm telling you guys that and I'm not just saying this because she's my sister-in-law yes she's my sister-in-law but I'm telling you guys she has great things I'm not even going to bring it to you if I don't if I haven't tested it and tried it okay so 25,000 package for guys is a pair of shoe um, and perfume um, and then the 25k package for women is uh, a pair of slides, a uh, mini bag, a mini bag, and also perfume and chocolate. Um, 28k for guys is a, a bag of shoes, um, lavish leather belt, and perfume. Anyways, you can go to her page to see the packages. It's going to the sales, it's going to start from January. 30th to February 5th so it's good for you to pre-order so that you know your deliveries can be made in time okay all right guys so let us get to today's video all right so today's video is actually a question that one of you asked I think she sent the she sent this 5th of January so that's about two weeks ago sorry I'm just trying to get through my my dms many of you have sent me dms that I've not been able to get through it on tiktok I have over 
the last time I checked, I had over a hundred and something DMs that I've not responded to just because it's overwhelming, okay? I will try to get to it, but I'm not making any promises. I'm so sorry. Um, but if you've sent me any important DMs that you want me to respond to, please resend it so that it goes to the top of my DM and then I'll check it out, okay? All right, so um, I'm not going to mention her name, but she sent me a message and she said, Hello, ma'am. Blessed morning to you from Nigeria. I am a big fan of yours and I have been following you online for about two years now. Wow, thank you so much. All right, she says, your content has been such a blessing to me even till I got married last year. I'm not gonna call the, the date. So she said, thank you for all you do on this space. God bless you, amen. She said, please, I'd love to ask a question that has been bothering me for a long time. I have tried searching for any of your videos on that, but I haven't gotten yet. I think I actually have one video on that. I think I even responded with me and my husband, but it was a Q&A, so we didn't really delve much into it. But she said that, um, please, how can I manage sexual urges as a married woman? My husband got an appointment in a certain country and relocating to meet him would take about nine to 10 months. And our chances of seeing is still is until then. So she cannot see him until nine to 10 months. And it has really been a battle for me, battling with serious urges almost every night. How, how much I can relate. <laughs> and she said, I have prayed, I've cried, I've told him over and over till I'm tired. Most times I feel better during the day, but at night I'm always missing him and just want to hold him close. Aww. We both were virgins before we got married and our marriage was quite young before he left. But the appointment was also an answer to our prayers, which I understand. So he had to leave while I round up with my NYC here and join him. She said, most of the advice I've gotten here from, are from elderly ones and are more on prayer and spiritual stuff. But I thought that probably I could get more practical tips from you, ma'am. I have tried keeping myself busy throughout the day, but at night, I always feel I need him so much. What can I do, please? I would appreciate a response, okay? First of all, I'm sorry that I did not respond to this as soon as possible, okay? I'm trying my best. <laughs> really try my best here um and i need to also let you know that you know i totally relate to how you're feeling i know what it feels like to you know long for your partner's touch you know be sexually frustrated when you're in a long distance marriage i mean the whole essence of you waiting all these years to do it is so that in marriage there's no restriction right um but we live in a time now that especially with this jackpot syndrome happening in nigeria now you know couples are constantly apart and that could cause a lot of strain already in the relationship and also frustration sexually so i totally get that i can relate to it so much because i mean <laughs> one year <laughs> we just went through one year of that so i get that i understand your um I understand it and i think that it, sometimes it's even worse for virgins because be because somehow there's this assumption that because you've not been doing it for a while it should be okay since you know long distance should not be difficult for you there's always this assumption but it's not really true because the truth is once you awaken love once you awaken that side of you and especially if your partner is good at it if you're a first timer, it, 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 it can get very, very intense, okay? It can really, really get very intense where you're not getting it as you ought to. And also, depending on your sex drive. So let's get into it, okay? Um, like I said, this is something that I went through. Um, but before I even get, you know, into details, the first thing I want to first of all highlight here is that not everything is permitted in your marriage. And I know sexually, right? I know even I have said that in the past that, oh, everything, as long as you're married, you can do anything. But I know that even then, I put I, le I let you know that there are certain things that are not permitted in marriage, right? And I know that sometimes it is this fear of, you know, I don't want to sin by committing adultery, but I also don't want to sin by being lustful. I don't want to watch pornography because it's a sin, nor masturbate because, you know, it's a sin. But at the same time, I'm feeling these urges and my partner is not around and, you know, what do I do, right? You know, how do I navigate this? Because the feeling is there. So what do I do with these feelings, right? Um, and I know, and I'm telling you, it's different for those that are single. Because again, if you're single and you're keeping yourself, 
it's different than a person that's why you see people single people that are having sex it's difficult for them to stop because once you are waking up you know the songs of solomon says oh daughter of jerusalem or whatever don't awaken love before it's time because when you awaken it is like you've awakened that part of you it's difficult i'm not saying it's impossible it's definitely possible but it's difficult for you to let it go but it's even easier for you to let it go when you're single because you know that oh it's not like there's somebody there that you're longing for you know yeah unlike when you're married you know that first of all you are licensed to have those feelings you are licensed to have sex but you cannot have it you know because your partner is not here so i just want to establish that it is difficult for married people right than it is for single people way difficult right however like i said initially there is always this notion that you know and i'm sure a number of preachers have said it but I'm, I'm, i want to be certain that they also put a balance that as long as you're married god permits anything you know they, and we always use this verse this bible verse marriage is honorable and the bed on the file you know i had to go back to that scripture and i realized that it's not actually a statement it's a, a commandment right let marriage be kept honorable and the bed be kept on the and the bible and then he went on to tell us how you can defile the bed of marriage he says through sexual immorality and through adultery so now the big question is what is permissible in marriage in in sorry what is permissible during sex in marriage because really god did not really dictate how we should have sex in marriage because i also believe that god left it to us and also there's the holy spirit to help us know what is right and know what is wrong however this is what people mean when they say that anything is permitted in marriage one thing first of all you need to know is what is marriage a slow marriage is between two people a male and a female biblically coming together to be one in the presence of god so when we say that and i say that you know marriage anything is permitted in your marriage bed as long as it is a marriage a biblical marriage between two people using what god gave the two of you to sexually please yourself anything is permitted whether it is your hand your mouth your body your leg whatever it is as long as it's between the two of you there is no third party in your mind because when we talk about third party sometimes we only talk about third party in terms of oh inviting threesome or foursome no 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 third party in your mind third party in the objects that you bring into your marriage bed yes okay god what god gave us everything we need to be able to satisfy each other in our marriage okay sexually so when we say that everything is permitted as long as it is between the two of you you're meeting each other's sexual needs you know in your marriage between the two of you only both in your mind physically and in every other aspect so that is my own interpretation of that verse through the help of the holy spirit right okay now that we have that out of the way another thing that i've constantly said here and you know every time on this channel is sex is not just penetration and i think this is the bedrock for answering this question many of us think that until the thing enter the thing that is when sex has happened but that's not true sex goes beyond that in short i always say that um sex starts way before the intimacy starts you know sex starts from the teasing from the touching from the you know holding and the rubbing and all of that before the action starts all of those is sexual right so when and that's why you know sometimes we try to put wiggle room as long as and i know even when i was single there were times that i made that mistake also as long as we are not you know there are a lot of us that <laughs> you know we call ourselves virgins but really the only thing we did not do was a thing entering the thing but you see a number of you know christians engaging in oral engaging in you know physical sex without you know the thing entering the thing <laughs> right um and then you say you're not having sex as long as penetration has not happened but that's not true sex goes beyond penetration right that's why i said that god gave us all the organs we need to be able to please each other sexually it is not just the vagina and the penis that is just for sex right so as long as we know that and we have that at the back of our mind it makes answering this question very easy i know that we christians struggle with this so much but one thing you need we need to get in our head is the sexual organ we have is not only the vj and the penile no they are other sexual organs that's why if, you know if your husband you know kisses certain parts of your body it awakens you that is sex so if you're doing all those things outside of marriage you are still sinning kissing romancing all those things if you're doing it outside of marriage it's still sinning some of us did it thank god for grace and mercy and mercy is still available for you but don't take it for granted okay so when you have that at the back of your mind that sex is not just penetration 
you understand that even when my partner is apart, we can have sex without being together. And that's where this video is going to and answering this lady's question. When, um, of course, before me and my partner, and this is one thing, if you and your partner, if you're going to have a long distance marriage, have a conversation about how, about how you're going to navigate sex before you guys separate. So that you have an agreement. If you need to maybe consult your pastors or consult your marriage counselors, you know, to be in, in order to be able to maybe, or maybe if one person is, you know, objecting, you can have a third party come in to let him know that, okay, it's okay. It's not a sin as long as you guys are married, right? That would really help. But have that conversation. Have that conversation before so that you guys navigate it. For us, we definitely had that conversation because sex is a very important part of marriage. You can take sex out of marriage. As a matter of fact, in the presence of God, the husband and wife becoming one with sex is the coming of one with God. That's the covenant of marriage. Sex, that's why even in law, if you've not consummated your marriage, the marriage can be dissolved as if it never happened without any record of it. Yes, if there was no consummation, right? But once consummation happens, then it's difficult for you to even get a divorce. And it's the same thing with God yeah okay so <laughs> now sex is an important part of marriage like i said you can't take it out of marriage so therefore because sex is so important in marriage you cannot afford not to be sexually connected there are couples who have to i know a couple that they've been apart for three years the wife is in the u.s the husband is here they've been trying to come together but it's not happening so in three years because they are christians they will not have any sexual interaction is that what we are saying and this is what is being preached in church and people are sexually frustrated in church and then they are tempted because you see with the place you don't feed just like spiritually when you don't feed your spiritual mind the devil will come and attack you spiritually it's the same way you don't feed your sexual side you are allowed you are living in a vacuum that the devil will come and attack and that's why the plan of god was never for husband and wife to be apart and that's all they said i know they're they are extenuating circumstances that causes us to be apart but as much as you can try to be together that's one of the reasons why you know me and my husband had to compromise on the country that we were like okay if you am to stay here it's going to take you a longer time for you to come and join me so um let's look for something that will be shorter right because marriage was never meant for us to be apart and that's how attacks comes in marriage. That's when fornication comes in marriage, adultery comes in marriage. A lot of things happens in marriage. We, you know, we, where we are not together, loopholes have, you know, have created. And it could be in your mind, sexually frustrated wife, and then there's one colleague that is suddenly becoming nice to her and telling her all these beautiful things. And before you know what is happening, a careless kiss happens, and all the, and all of the, and all of those things. So I'm not saying this is the case. Obviously, this is not the case, but I'm saying that, you know. It was never God's design that we should be apart. However, there are situations that will be, even in the Bible, men will go for war and they'll be there for, you know, for days, for months, sometimes for years before they come back to their partners. I don't know much about them, so I'm not even going to try to explain how they survived it. But thankfully, we live in a world that technology has made things easy, right? But I think a lot of Christians struggle with, <laughs> with, allowing technology into that aspect of our marriage because we are afraid that we are sinning satisfying yourself has always been equated to sinning even inside of marriage and it's true because sex is supposed to be between two people right however because like we've laid the foundation that sex is not just penetrative as long as it's the two of you satisfying each other there is no sin in it there is no sin, and I'm saying this based on my own interpretation of the scripture and, you know, with the help of the Holy Spirit, I believe there is no sin in it, right? And that's why sometimes it's important that you get to, you know, study the word for yourself and help, ask the help of the Holy Spirit to interpret the word to you because sometimes a number of people interpret scripture based on their culture. So it's like when, when you ask an American about, you know, sex, long distance sex when you're married, their response will be different from when you're asking an Af African pastor because somehow our culture is how we interpret scripture through the lens of our culture sometimes. And that is dangerous. So basically what I'm saying in this video is that they are, have a conversation with your partner before you guys, you know, go your separate ways that in the meantime, how do we navigate this issue of sex? what are your beliefs in short these are things we discussed before you even get married what do you believe if we have there's a time me and my husband talked about this in short we were literally long distance so those are conversations we had to have if there's a situation where we have to be long distance what happens to our sexual relationship intimacy in a marriage what happens right those are questions you should ask before you even get so that you know the person's mindset about that and you guys can work on it before marriage because sex is important in marriage so 
anyways i and my husband discussed that and we you know we discussed it way before marriage so we discussing it again when i was about to travel was us just you know reminding ourselves of the agreements we've had right and it was just a no-brainer for us because there was no way we're going to be apart for one year and then have no sexual communication no sexual interaction it's impossible we are married <laughs> right my body will long for him his body will long for me and you know there are crazy times and in order to allow the other person not to sin I'm not saying that sexual urges is, an, is you know an excuse for you to sin but sometimes if you're able to help the other person why are you holding back so the ways that i think that you guys can handle it as a married couple is first of all ensure that you know you communicate communication is very important let your partner know when they are in the mood right sometimes it's not even how you're you know you just intentionally feeling sometimes it's hormones sometimes it's your body just craving your partner and there's no sin in it so first of all know that it's not a sin that you're feeling that way right and know how to communicate that let your partner know that ah babe i'm hot okay then if i was feeling like that I would, when i call my husband sometimes i just send a picture if I send him a picture, he knows what I'm saying, okay? It doesn't have, and of course, please don't include your face in the pictures because internet is a very dangerous place. So you have to be very, very careful. You know, no matter how careful you are, sometimes you cannot be too careful, right? So make sure that you send safe pictures. Sometimes if I send it to him, he knows what I'm talking about. On WhatsApp now, you can send picture that you can, once you view it once, it deletes from your, from you, from the person's phone. So harness those technology privacy principles, okay? Right? Sometimes you send, sometimes it's just a seductive message. Learn how to, you know, sext, okay? Learn how to text, you know, sexual conversations, right? Go ahead and learn how to do that, you know? And sometimes it's not, it's not a hard. Just text him how you're feeling, right? Or, you know, share your fantasies. Share the things that you, you would, if he was here, what, what, would, what would you guys be doing? Or what would you like to do to him? Or what would you like him to do to you? You know, talk about those things. When you have your, when you're feeling that way, call him. Let him know that, ah, guy, but they you know they do me they do me one kind one kind you know community sometimes just talking about it talking about how it feels talking about the things that you do to each other when you see each other it helps okay so be open in your communication about that right so if you're able to communicate that and communicate your fantasies communicate how you're feeling communicate what you want what you would like him to do to you communicate what you would do to him if he was there Communi communicate everything in your mind the wild imagination and that's why i said see if you marry your friend these things is easy than when you marry somebody that you guys don't really understand each other and especially if you're virgins right this is a time for you to like let your fantasy go out as long as it's between the two of you and not too wild that you know can get very crazy or scare the other person but just be honest and raw with your partner that's what you guys are married for you are licensed to do this thing okay all right so communicate openly and then and there's the power of social media okay now the thing about you know um uh, long distance intimacy is that you need to be also very careful it cannot be something you do persistently because um just like uh having okay let me start with this all right and please if you know that you are a fanatic or you are a person that believes that long distance sex is not permitted in marriage please you can just click off from here you are, i've made my point to you if you are struggling with this this is what you need to hear okay all right if you guys are you know in long distance marriage and then you want to engage in that there are certain things that you need to first of all note you know and be careful about the first thing like i said make sure that you have to deal with your imagination a lot. I know it's not everybody that is gifted with imagination, but you need to awaken your imagination. Think about the things that you want your partner to do, the things you would normally do when you guys were together, you know, once you are together and then talk about those things with each other, you know, talk about the times that, you know, certain things happen in your marriage bed, talk about memories and, you know, exciting times that you had and, you know, what, how you would like that to happen again and all those things just to be able to awaken the other person, right? If you need to send pictures that will, you know, of certain parts that the person likes, please go ahead. It's your husband. He has already seen everything and he's entitled to seeing it, whether virtually or physically. Okay. All right. And then when you, do, when you do that, right. Um, be mindful, be ensure that your imagination is only your partner, it's not somebody else, okay? And then you're thinking of what you guys have done before, you know, what you would like to incorporate. Talk about it whilst you think about those things with him. Imagine him doing those things to you or when he had done those things to you in the past and then talk about it with each other. And of course, whilst you're having this conversation, your body will be, you know, you're imagining things, your partner is there, you're both talking, you're both, you know, and then you you basically have intimacy virtually, okay? Have intimacy virtually, you know, 
using your your physical features your hands your your voice your you know your body and all of that just talk to each other and be with each other and you know please each other whether you are together or you're virtual as long as you're married there is nothing in it it's intimacy as far as i'm concerned it's not until there's penetration that sex has happened no there are other ways but you have to also be careful because it can get very addictive and it can make you very lazy sexually so such that when you get together you prefer to do you know help yourself than to do get to intimacy so you need to be very careful this is not something you do all the time these are things this is something you do maybe you know every once in a while when they you know when it gets out of hand sometimes just talking about it helps you to you know and talking about you know future things helps you to get your get it off right i know that you know anyway i don't want to use myself as an example in this scenario just because i don't want people to think nasty things but um you know when you it's not something that you do like i said you know you have to be mindful of how often you guys engage in this it's not something you do all the time so that you don't get dependent on it the times that you can get very lazy you can get you know addicted to it and before you know what is happening it can get out of hand so make sure that first of all your imagination or your sorry your fantasy is connected to your spouse and you guys are connected to each other you're saying things to excite each other you're reminding yourself or remembering things that you guys have done to each other in the past and then you know you guys are enjoying yourself <laughs> but try to space it out as often as possible so that you don't get dependent on it right and i'm telling you a time will come that you your body will not even want that's it the virtual thing anymore it will want the real thing but you will get to that stage where you know that thing that is pampering that is making your body do gish gish it will calm down it's because it's just the beginning i'm telling you it will calm down and another thing that i would also say you know apart from satisfy helping yourself you know virtually having virtual intercourse and stuff you also need to make sure that you keep your mind occupied mm. I know you said that you work and it's difficult at night and all of that. You also need to be mindful. What kind of movies are you watching? What kind of things are you, what kind of thoughts are you thinking? What kind of, you know, you can, you too, you need to be careful. What kind of conversations are you listening to that is making you up, up, up every time? Because I remember when I was in school then, when I have papers to write, I don't even used to think. Sometimes I'm going to say, ah, that's been a while. Sister, what's going on? Like, ah, see, brother, I know they even think reach that side anymore because I, my mind is so busy. And occupy so maybe you need to you know really engage your mind um get something get busy so that you're not thinking of that all the time right because it's not healthy no matter how much you know virtual thing helps it's not sustainable so you also need to find ways to make yourself not always be in that situation so if you're in a long distance marriage and you're constantly watching erotic movies reading erotic novels reading erotic articles or you are watching you know pornography or you are doing all those things and then you are saying that your body is calling before call, it won't call it will call now because you are awakening the love right so first of all be mindful of the thought you think especially at night right um engage yourself make sure that you keep yourself busy right keep yourself engaged keep your mind engaged Focus on you know the other things that you need to focus on. Don't engage in sexual conversation if you know that those things trigger you. Know the things that trigger you, the things that awakens you, and try to stay away from it until you and your partner are together. I'm telling you, that really helped me. At the beginning, it was really tough because we're apart and my body was always calling for him. But the moment <laughs> I entered school, I was busy with work. When I come back, I'm always tired. I just go to bed, you know. Also, engage yourself spiritually. I know you said they're content. I'm telling you, it also helps. Sometimes you just need to like focus on god focus on what god is calling you to do in that season focus on you know for me our time apart really helped me to build a relationship with god a more deep relationship with god because you see when your partner is there sometimes you're not able to pray as long as you want fast when you want and all of that because your partner is there but now is a time to actually consecrate yourself you know actually give god yourself give god your time really hear from him have a relationship with him i really use that time to like build that with god and that really helped me because those people will always engage your mind you're always thinking of other things that you want to do for god and you know your calling and all those things right so make sure that you know you engage your mind spiritually engage your mind physically psychologically and also just really know your triggers and stay away from the things that triggers you right but there will be times that your body you can't help it hormones will come you're relating you know those kind of seasons and hey in those real occasions engage yourself virtually right so that is my advice. Let me know if you guys have any advice in the comment section below. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. But this is what I'm going to remember to follow Olivia Collections 
on Instagram and start to do your Valentine shopping, okay? Book ahead so that you guys can get everything sorted out before the sales is over. All right, thank you guys so very much for watching. Until we meet again, I still remain Victoria. I did the fashion. I'll see you guys in the next one, okay? Bye.